actually last uh, Tuesday, we have on 18th or August, we have done the first part of uh, this presentation that is a basic AVN practice, part one. That is all the basic. I think uh, uh, some of you must, or uh, most of you must be in, uh, so that uh, my first presentation. So it is easy for you to learn about the second presentation. If somebody missed the first presentation, don't worry. Uh, you can go into the YouTube channel of NCRT Cyber Organic Limited and uh, you can access over there. Okay, so uh, we will start with the presentation. Uh, so outline of my presentation includes basic clinical techniques. As a avian veterinarian, what are the basic things, uh, clinical techniques to be followed in your clinic? And what are the treatment techniques? Uh, normal treatment techniques, uh, something is very different from that of animal that I will share. And the very common avian disorder, you know, uh, avian disease is a very much worse subject. It's not possible in a span of one hour. So, which is a very common uh, avian disorder, which I have come across. I have taken the photographs, which I will share with you. And the two in Indian scenario. And if time permits, we will go for a case discussion of the cases as well. So, uh, basic clinical techniques we will go with. Uh, hematological parameters or techniques, microbiological, parasitical, and a simple diagnosis. Everything I'm taking as a base only, uh, not a big rocket science I'm sharing with. Everything basic. If you didn't understand anything, you can free to ask me at the end regarding my presentation. Whatever I know, uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned, I will uh, let you know. So, uh, first we will see to the hematological things. You know, uh, the, it's a physiology. I'll talk a little about the physiology. The normal volume of uh, blood in a bird is 10% uh, of the of its body weight. So safe blood that can be collected from a bird for hematological uh, parameter assessment is 1% of the body. Okay, that means if you have a cockatiel, uh, sorry, if you have an African love bird uh, or a cockatiel or cockatoo weighing 100 gram, you can collect 1 ml maximum blood. Okay, that is a maximum. Try to keep it in 0.5 to 0.7 ml that will do. Okay, one major problem uh, that is uh, what we find uh, that is apart from that of uh, there will be chance of uh, sorry the chance of uh, post venipunctal hematoma building up of hematoma is very much uh, uh, common in this box. Don't worry about that after collecting the blood. Keep your digital pressure with your finger for at least 60 seconds or one minute. You can control that hematoma. So I will just show you the sites common. You can see the first picture of mine, the person you can see hopefully. Uh, it's a neck of the bird and that is the right jugular vein. So whenever you're collecting blood uh, uh, in small birds, you can go for right jugular. Why right jugular? Uh, compared to the left jugular vein, right jugular is a little more uh, bigger than left. So it's easy for and the uh, most peripheral located. So it's very easy for you to see the jugular vein uh, once you pluck that uh, feathers at the area and you can directly collect the blood. And the second one is here that is a medial tibiotar medial tibiotarsal vein in the leg, in the medial side of the leg at the hog joint area. You can see the uh, medial tibio medial median tibiotarsal vein. You can collect. I personally prefer this side rather than uh, jugular vein. And also, of course, you can collect from the wing vein. That is a basic vein of the elbow joint. That's not a problem. And in some small birds, if you can't access any of their area, you can go for even toenail clipping. With the clip, I can get a little drops of blood. But it's least preferred uh, site because sometimes it keep on bleeding and you can't control the clip. That's why it is. So just like that of animals, you can prepare blood smear out of that, even CBC and all the blood works can be done with this blood. So, uh, just talk uh, be very basic about the, I know most of you might know how to prepare the blood smear and all, but I'm not going into that detail. I just share my things. That means uh, you all know, you keep a glass slide, you keep a drop of blood and with second glass slide, you can slide, that is a dragging or you can just push it. So I prefer dragging uh, method over that of pushing method. That's a conventional thing. Sometimes if you uh, you can also use a cover slip and a slide. You can keep a drop of blood in that uh, slide. With a small cover slip, you can count, uh, keep it over that, spread it evenly and drag it. That also will form a good uh, uh, blood smear. And if you are getting a very uh, uh, minute drop of blood in small birds, 
it can use two cover slip. With one cover slip, you can put a drop of blood, and with other cover slip, you can slide it over. And you can dry the cover slip and stain the cover slip, and you can see. There are different methods. Just for your knowledge, I am just sharing for you. Uh, please uh, don't put any uh, markings over the slides. Uh, it will be disturbed for the fellow uh, vets. Please mind it. Okay, thank you. So, <clears throat> uh, so where which cases we are mainly go for blood smear examination? You can see uh, this is the pigeon. Uh, can so. Uh, doctor, you I think you can stop the annotations. Yeah, yeah. In the more section. Yeah. Annotation. More. Uh, if disabled participant annotation. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, when you are, uh, whenever a bird is present, especially a pigeon, is present with torticolis and neurological symptoms, you can, uh, one of the differential is pigeon malaria or hemoglobin colony. In that, you can take the blood directly from the vein and you can prepare a blood smear. And this is a uh, blood smear which I have but I'm taken in my own uh, mobile. You can see around, you know, uh, the pieces of the bird is nucleated RBC, you know. Around the nucleated RBC, you can see a halter shaped uh, uh, gamma, that is a gamma, gamma, gamma of hemoproteus columbae. Uh, this is an internet picture, just to offer your uh, uh, information and tell you. You can see micro gamma, in that granules will be there in the cradle and caudal aspect, that will be a micro gamma or uh, female venetal, uh, male venetal. And if you are having a continuous granules, all over the halter shaped gamma, the macro gamma of female. Just uh, for you, that's a male part and female gamma part. Just for your information, I'll tell you. When you're seeing this thing, you can start with the therapy. Okay. Okay, uh, so now we will go for a microbiological uh, examination. For that, uh, commonly you can go for cloacal swab. Uh, you can see. Now, this is a clinical swab which is taken from a bird which having uh, what we call constant diarrhea and loose feces and polyuria. You can take the back from that and examine for uh, bacteria, what type of bacteria is there. And you can, of course, go for a trot swab and shonal swab. Shona, in my last class, I already told Shona is nothing but it's a slit like opening. This one is that which uh, connects nasal cavity with that of oral cavity. So that if your uh, bird has any respiratory problem or oral cavity lesions, you can uh, the single swab taken from the shonal sap will reveal what type of organism there. Okay, and um, uh, this is the throat sap. Uh, actually, this is a picture I have taken during my internship uh, period. That is in long way back in 2012. Uh, this picture is taken by my uh, doctor. I might be knowing. Um, this is actually a Ostrich actually having some problem, respiratory problem. We have taken the swab and examined. The case was found positive for aspergillosis. Uh, so I just want to show that. So this is a picture. You can see the shonal swab uh, smear. You can see a rod shaped organism over here, the active organism. And uh, if you want to take some swabs for crop, from crop, if you have suspected some case of cancer, candidiasis, or uh, trichomoniasis, you can take a crop swab after washing from eye, ear, skin swab, just like uh, dogs and cats can do that. And uh, this uh, birds are very prone for uh, arthritis, joint arthritis. If you have any problem with their joint disease, uh, you can try to take the joint fluid and uh, go for pulse transits. That is regarding the basic microbiological analysis. And you know, uh, birds have external and internal parasite, uh, that is some important thing. They have lice, sticks, and you guys can see a tick over a budgie with tick on the face. Like that, you can see a budgie here. See this face. I mean, it's a beak and all. This is a scaly mite infection. You can see honey, typical honeycomb like uh, pattern you can see in the face and the beak and all. You can suspect it for nevodococcus or scaly mite infection. It's very common in uh, exotic birds. And even uh, if you suspected something, if you uh, suspected something else, you can take skin scrapping. Just like uh, in dogs and cats, you can uh, 
analyze the skin scrapping for uh, red mite. Uh, this is a picture of a red mite over here. And uh, that's about external parasite. Some internal parasite also can exist. Uh, for that, routine clinical, exam clinical examination can be done. You can see so many pictures over here. These are the pictures A, B, C, D, and all descriptions have been given. Up to A, up to J, these all are the uh, eggs or ova of round worms or nematode. From uh, letter K, L, M, N, and all those things are photos of eggs, like uh, Imeria, Coxidia, and Endemiba, and all those have been taken by different species of birds just for your information and even by post-mortem examination you can see n lot of uh, round worms or hook worms in the body of the birds and that's about the fecal sample examination now we will move to uh, what we call the basic radiographic anatomy you know uh, just like a dogs and cat we can go for all the diagnostic tests like uh, ultrasound scanning but ultrasound scanning is very limited in birds because we don't have uh, we have to pluck all the feathers if we want to go for that let's make a limited uh, table limitation but uh, x-ray is not at all a problem you can carry out any x-ray uh, nowadays computerized x-ray and uh, digital x rays everybody is there you can do that too. but uh, whenever you are taking any x-ray you have to take orthogonal view that is two views basically one is uh, whole body ventral also view that is this view and the other view is lateral view both have to be taken, whatever it may be, if it is a leg or if it is a head or if it is a whole body, whenever, not only in birds, whenever you are doing in any animals, orthogonal view, that is 90 degree view is very much important to compare the visions. Okay, let's keep in mind, that is a take away home message. And this is a, for keeping that bird like this for VD, you can either anesthetize here, they have used isoflurane anesthesia, and you can uh, keep the wing apart and you can tie with microporte in case if it's anesthetized but if you don't have a, a anesthesia facility that means inhalant anesthesia facility you can catch all of the bird when you can give caloperidol and all those things and it mildly uh, reduce uh, aggression and then you can go for that and when you are taking the x-ray you can see all the uh, very beautiful x-ray you can see over here and you can see all the limbs uh, uh, wings legs and all those things over here Heel bone, everything, and the good thing you can see is that this is a, uh, I think hopefully you can see my cursor, and where my cursor is pointed here is the lung area. Both sides you can see lung area. The typical lung pattern is honeycomb like pattern. Okay. You see here honeycomb like pattern, you can say, Oh, my bird has a good, uh, uh, what we call healthy lung, don't worry about that. And um, even you can see uh, blackish areas over here that are air sacs, that is. Uh, uh, air sacs filled with air and the one important thing you have to keep in your mind is that this is heart and this is the uh, liver heart and liver that is cardio hepatic sealout is just like hourglass you can see i have given the picture of a hourglass here where you compare like that just like that shape only upper hourglass area will be occupied by the heart lower hourglass will be occupied by that of liver you are seeing a typical hourglass appearance you can say it's a normal cardio hepatic sealout if there is any variation, you can suspect that pathology. Okay, that is it. And another important thing is that size of heart, how to compare size of heart. If you, for example, if you uh, take the width of your heart in VD X ray as X, and uh, this left side, right side of the bird, uh, this width from heart to the thoracic as Z, and the other one Y. That means total thoracic width is equal to X plus Y plus Z. Okay, that is a total thoracic width. The width of uh, heart is X. That means if you compare the size of heart width with that of thoracic width, which occupies cardiac cell out or heart or have to occupy 51 to 61 percentage of the thoracic width. Okay. If it is more than that of 61, that's 70 or 80 percentage, you can uh, suspect for macrocardia, enlarged heart. If the heart uh, width is less than that of 50, 45, 35, and all, you can suspect it for microcardia or degree size of heart. That is the thing you can elucidate from this radiograph. And uh, another uh, orthogonal view is uh, late lateral view. For this, you can position the bird like this. I'm just talking about only all body history. Okay. Uh, uh, so if you want to examine uh, any GI tract uh, for foreign body obstruction or kidney, uh, you can see this is a kidney and all the GI 
as you can see, better view is lateral view. But you have to take both the view, but better we will uh, have to see in lateral view. And uh, you can see heart is here, you can see this dotted surface, heart is here. And this is nothing but the ventriculus or gizac. And this is a proventriculus and this is a, a rounded spleen, you can see gonads, kidney and all things. And uh, you can see this is a keel bone, a uh, very beautiful bone you can see, this is a margin of keel bone. And uh, just near to keel bone and heart, this area actually occupied by liver. Okay, so uh, radiographically in normal liver, it have to be uh, up to the level of keel bone. This is up to the level of keel bone. This is normal, uh, liver is here only. If you see the liver extending beyond the keel bone, you can suspect it of some hepatomegaly, like a fatty liver or hepatitis or of that. That is the application. And you can see all the beautiful air sacs. You know, uh, there is a very peculiarity of birds is that they have air sacs. That means they have nine air sacs. Uh, one paired cervical air sacs they have, one unpaired clavicular air sac, two radial thoracic, two quarter thoracic, and two abdominal air sacs. Total nine air sacs are there. They are radiolucent. You can see here. Top, you can see some body body is there. You can see in that. That is a basic. So, last time when I have uh, done my presentation about this, Sipla asked me regarding what is the KV and may have to be given. Just for your information, you can take a screenshot out of this, or uh, whenever we are uploading in the YouTube, you can take a screenshot also not a problem this is just for information you can take a screenshot and paste it in your uh, x-ray room here we have given which part have to be viewed what is the body weight of the bird and what is a kb to be kept what is the ma to be kept what is the focal film distance to be kept uh, what time as for, uh, but generally we can say 50 to 60 kb is very good for the birds and uh, 15 ma is ma and the time is also constant here very less time because the birds keep on moving and respiration is very faster. So if you take in a lot of time, it's very good. And all this, we just take a screenshot, no need of explanation. So uh, next we will go for the treatment technique. Now we are going for clinical techniques and diagnosis. Now we are going for the basic treatment techniques, what to be done with an avian patient uh, when compared to the animal patients presenting. The first important and foremost thing is the heat support. Second one is fluid therapy. Third one is a panel medication. We will see one by one in detail. So, you know, all the birds have a small size and they have high surface area volume ratio. This makes them very prone to hypothermia. Hmm? That's why whenever the bird is feeding ill, you can see the first thing you can see is a fluffed up feather. It's nothing but to maintain their thermoregulatory mechanism, they are fluffing their uh, feathers. That we have, I have explained to you in, uh, in my last presentation. Hope you understand that. And if a bird is presented to you in shock condition, you know normal body temperature of a bird's fall around 105, 106, 107, 108. If it's fall down beyond 100 and all, it's uh, hypothermia. You have to keep the bird in 25 to 30 degrees Celsius in 70 percent humidity. Usually in my uh, in clinics or home, you can advise for an incandescent bulb. That is a yellow bulb, incandescent bulb, 40 watt, watt bulb, 60 watt bulb, 100 watt bulb, you can hang it one and a half to two feet height of the bird so that it can act as uh, heat support if you have infrared radiation at your clinic you can use this as well this is a picture i am using a, a barn owl which is rescued by the forest officer when i was working in uh, one of the government veterinary hospital in kerala uh, we have infrared there and give you infrared whenever you are giving infrared you have to keep don't give too uh, near to the bird you have to keep at least one and a half or uh, two feet high, you can keep the infrared and keep on moving it. Uh, if it's over uh, this thing uh, heated, it will, uh, bird feather will get, uh, get fire or burnt. And if you don't have incandescent bulb and infrared, don't worry, you can use a simple heating pad. Electric heating pads are available right now, uh, nowadays, or even hot water uh, heating pads can be used, not a problem. Even uh, one thing you have to take care uh, hypothermia is very common especially when you are anesthetizing the bird whenever you're doing any surgical procedure you have to keep the bird on heating pad and surgery. that is a take care away home message for all of you and um, now then we move to the flow therapy mm -hmm. uh, whenever there are greater than seven percent dehydration the symptoms you can see in your bird is that they will have some eyes just like uh, dogs and cats and uh, they have increased vrt vrt is nothing but vascular refill time in dogs and cats, we used to tell CRT, capillary refill time. Just like that, uh, 
in the basic vein or the wing vein, we can see the vein as such. When you press it and release, the time taken to refill the vein that is called as uh, vascular refill time that will be increased. Normally, one to two seconds. If it increases beyond two or three, you can say your body is dehydrated. You will have red and wrinkled skin and skin tent. When you uh, especially face skin, you uh, pull it, it will tend it. And the X-ray is a good uh, choice for uh, accessing the dehydration. You can see an X-ray over here. I have already told you the typical shape is hourglass shape. But see the upper hourglass. See the heart is like a, what we call a dried grape or kismis. See? This is a very dehydrated bird. Uh, you can see. So by accessing this, you can uh, access the dehydration status. Some rule is that you have to give fluid uh, up to 10 percentage of the body weight at least for two to three days. There are different uh, routes of fluid therapy can be ad administered like oral, intravenous, intraosseous and subcutaneous. We will see one by one in detail. Orally, the bird can be fed with the hand feed formula and water, not a problem, but for only for in case of mild dehydration or functional GI tract, then only go for oral therapy. Otherwise, don't go for oral therapy. Otherwise, you can directly give water into the crop by crop feeding. Uh, the thumb rule is that uh, you can uh, give uh, 50 milliliter per kg of the total volume of the crop. That, is, that means in a bird, three to four percentage of the body weight uh, is that crop volume actually. Uh, and uh, for uh, simplifying, I can tell uh, per kg, 50 ml is the uh, crop volume. That uh, if you have, have a one kg bird, 50 ml is a crop volume, don't give 50 ml. You can give one by third or half the total volume at a time. Otherwise, if you fill it completely, it will drink everything. So if you have a one kg bird, maximum you have to give 20 to 25 ml of the uh, hand be formula of water at a time. This people will come and ask to you. Mostly people make mistakes by power feeding with the crop and all. It will regurgitate and aspirate. That is a problem while uh, we have facing. Even you can give uh, their hand feed formula normal food, mixing uh, with water and give uh, under the uh, like temperature. Otherwise, you can very well give or dehydrated solution or reverse lactate even orally mixed with the food. And uh, when while you are feeding orally, you can go for uh, some uh, adding some therapeutic agents. Uh, if you have a bird that having uh, constant diarrhea and polyuria, to slow down the GI tract, you can add either methyl cellulose powder or spabula husk you can add. And, but if your bird is highly constipated uh, and endotoxins is there, you can add lactulose even. Act as a mild laxity uh, that will be around. And there are so many uh, instruments from, by which you can orally feed the birds. You can see so many syringes here, different sizes, spools, dropper. These all are uh, intended for oral feed. You can see the picture. The bird is orally fed here. And uh, this last three, four things, they are the crop tubes of different sizes of bird. This is directly you can pass into the crop and use the food. And this uh, rubber tube is also very good. You can directly pass into the uh, crop and give. So this is an important and challenging thing. How to feed bird with crop tube? I'll just show you very, make it very simple for you. This is a thing most of the vets uh, on me asking to me to WhatsApp and all those things. For your knowledge, I just included this. So, to take the crop feeder or a crop tube uh, in the left side of the bird, in between the commissure, left commissure, you pass the tube over the tongue to the right side. From left side commissure over the tongue to the right tongue, you just uh, pass it, it directly reaches the crop. Once it reaches crop, uh, how to see whether your uh, crop feed is. Uh, feeder or crop tube are directly go into the stomach. For that, you can do one thing. If it is directly go into the trachea, the bird will have a tough reflex. Some birds only will have that. Some birds, even if you pass into trachea, they don't uh, have tough reflex. But then you can palpate the neck area. Uh, if you have seen two tubes, that is one trachea and one crop tube, then you can say, oh, your technique is good or you are correctly done. But if you are, while palpate, you are seeing only one tube, that is trachea. You have to understand that your crop tube has gone into the trachea, okay. So like that. Other one is, the next one is that subcutaneously uh, fluid therapy. This is uh, uh, in a severe shock case, it's not at all recommended. Why? Because during shock, a peripheral blood circulation will be uh, less. That's why whenever you give fluid, won't get absorbed into the circulation. That's 
that's why if I'm not advisable to give him a shot. 5 to 10 ml per kg body weight you can give. Uh, important sites which you can uh, uh, see is that one is the inguinal area, that is a loose skin or propatagia of the leg connecting to the body. This area you can, that, this is an African grey parrot, we are giving this fluid over here. And another site is intracapsular, scapular, okay, in between the scapula on the back side, the loose skin also we can uh, give this fluid. But the fluid volume have to be 10 ml per kg body Next. Another one is intravenous fluid therapy. This is a important one and advisable one. All the crystalloids, fingers, lactate, DNS, all can be given at the dose rate of 10 to 25 ml, depending on the dehydration status, over five to 10 minutes. That's what. Don't give in a gash. Uh, it's very slowly you have to give. At least to take a five to seven minutes time. Okay. Whenever you are giving the fluids, you can warm it to 100 to 103 degree Fahrenheit up to the body temperature. Body temperature is 106 degree Fahrenheit, but you can just below that, uh, you can 100 to 103 degree uh, Fahrenheit, you can warm the fluid and give. The site I have already told for blood color, the same site you can go either right jugular vein in the neck or in the limb, uh, medial, median tibiotarsal vein or the elbow vein. This is a picture of uh, a house crow, the crow, rescued crow. We are giving uh, IV fluid uh, to this. And that is, uh, I my personally, I prefer this uh, limbo vein, medium tibiotarsal vein, without much complications. So, uh, another one important one is Indra osseous. Uh, this is very important root as far as a avian patient is concerned. It's very easier and faster than IV. Getting IV is uh, very difficult, especially when the bird is in shock, but uh, it's very easy for an can give Indra osseous. But the drawback is that uh, Indra osseous root is little painful. Uh, you have to avoid the pneumatic bone like humerus. You know, humerus bone is directly attached to the uh, clavicular right side. So whenever you give fluid to the cervix, I'm um, sorry, humerus, it will directly go into the air sac and cause air sac. Related. And even, uh, you know, uh, birds are very notorious for arthritis due to their gout problem, uric acid content. So whenever uh, unknowingly if the, your uh, needle goes into the joint space, it can cause joint trauma also and arthritis problem. Uh, the good thing also of intra osseous is that 50% fluid given intra osseously get into circulation within 30 seconds. That means it is uh, just similar to that of IV, just same effect that of I intravenous fluid therapy. There are two sites. Uh, one is on the forelimb, that means on the wings, ulna. This is a picture in the distal part of the alma. Not, not only not the proximal, from the distal part of alma, you can see you can directly pass the. Uh, small gauge spinal needle or normal needle and you can just pass it and uh, if we, uh, you are going for the leg you can go for the proximal tibiotar. Thumbu rule is that if you are going for four limb uh, the site is distal alna. If you are going for the hind limb the site is proximal tibiotar. That means in the leg proximally uh, in the wing distal. That is the thing. So uh, uh, thus we came to the end of fluid therapy. So then we'll move to some other uh, special routes which we are, we are doing in this birds. Uh, that is intratracheal, intratracheal route for uh, drug, drug delivery directly into the lungs and airways. You can uh, opt for intratracheal and uh, water soluble drugs. Or one thing is that it have whenever you are giving, you have to give water soluble drugs only. Uh, like uh, aspergillosis, uh, we can give amphotericin B uh, intratracheally. So directly go into the trachea, but uh, the See, the dose is only maximum 2 ml per kg. 1 kg dog, you can give maximum of, uh, sorry, 1 kg of a bird, you can give maximum of 2 ml only. That is the thing. Uh, best of sight is tracheal. In between the tracheal, trachea, you can just uh, pull off the uh, feathers and you can directly give uh, into the tracheal. In between the tracheal rings, you can directly give. Or else you can uh, see the pairing area. But personally, I prefer tracheal pairing area. Another important one is Indra sinusal. Uh, that is into the infra orbit sinus. Mm -hmm. That means you can uh, either flushing, if you want to flush, any, if you have a bird with sinusitis, that is mycoplasmal, mycoplasmosis and all, you will get a uh, heavy sinus, enlarged sinus. So you can, if you want to flush the sinus and administer some tracks, you can use this method, very simple. And if you want to collect some samples for cytology or uh, culture and sensitivity, you have to go for this. This is an infra orbital sinus, infra orbit, you know, infra beyond the eye, infra 
is beyond or between side. That means the sinus will be uh, located beyond the eye, this area. You can see it's enlarged over here. Here they are flushing it. Hmm? It's a kite. And you can see this bird, they are collecting the samples. For both purposes, we can go. If you want to flush something, you can give them some medicine directly into the sinusitis if you don't have nebulization. If you have nebulization, that is a better method. If you don't have nebulization, you can try this one also. And uh, another uh, one important route is intranasal, directly into the nose as a diagnostic and therapeutic uh, purpose. There is some intraorbital sinus affections you can go for. Uh, which are medicines you are giving for nebulization like endo or gentamicin? You can uh, take it in the syringe and uh, directly flush into the nasal valve. But uh, you have to take care about how much amount of fluid to be given intranasally. Uh, if you, you have a small birds like a budgerigar bud or parakeets or African lovebirds or pocket eel, you can give maximum of 3 ml, 1 to 3 ml uh, normal saline or this medicine. Six uh, fluid part is sufficient. Maximum you can have to give that only, don't give more than that. If you have a, a little bigger birds like cockatoos or macaws, we can be up to 15 ml, 10 to 15 ml. Total dose I'm telling you, 10 to 15 ml only. And uh, the last do uh, route is intraperitoneal. This intraperitoneal is a very good route when we go to a neonates. If you are having a very small bird, it's a rescued uh, orphan bird, you can uh, try this method for giving any medications. And also we can give anesthesia, uh, anesthesia, ketamine anesthesia, for orthopedic surgeries, I used to do in this method only, ketamine intraperitoneally. The site is that uh, it is a midline between that of uh, cloaca and sternum. If it's a cloaca, cloaca and the sternum, the central portion, we have to direct the, we have to keep the bird in a dorsal recupancy first, identify the mid portion in between the cloaca and the sternum. And you have to pass the uh, uh, needle parallel to that of the body that means parallelly to that of the keel bone or muscles avoiding the caudal air cells frailly. so this is the picture you can see if i see in the picture it's very clear it's a ketamine and giving to a guinea fowl and thus we came to the basic things and now we will see one by one uh, common event is what i told you i'm not going to cover all the diseases very few diseases uh, which is very commonly presented or i come across personally i have discussed here and uh, this I already told you, what are the signs of illness of an ill bird or sick bird apparent what we just we used to tell. I used to tell last time uh, in my presentation, I told it, but just for the freshening up of memory, I'm just uh, rewinding it or retelling it. Uh, if your bird is sick, the typical fluffy appearance, you can see that it's pretty fluffy and inactive. Bird will be inactive. Sometimes we start from the eyes and nose. It won't eat or drink properly and um, uh, respiratory problem is there so they will have a little movement tail bobbing and uh, changing weight general body condition i have told you keel bone how to see the keel bone uh, keel muscles uh, last time just like that you can examine the keel muscles and if you have vomiting regurgitation you have a polyuria that is motion color change in the motion and some injury this all are the typical appearance of a, uh, what we call a sick bird okay then now we can uh, see a video. This is a video of a typical sick bird, just a bird, uh, just to show. But you can see that bird is sleeping. Whenever the videographer come near to that, it's awake. But you can see the bird is very fluffy, very dull, depressed. The eyes, eye, something, eye discharge is there. This is a simple, just a simple video to understand what is a typical uh, sick bird. So now we are going uh, into. Uh, all the diseases uh, one by one to tell uh, systematically system wise examination you will see system wise uh, what are the affections very simple okay so first we'll see the affections of skin and feathers this is a very uh, common common problem that's come across a wild bird i mean uh, avian patient that is a bacterial dermatitis mostly they will get a dermatitis after following a predator attack they have a predator a dog or stray dog can attack after that, uh, they will have the, that area, they will have uh, what we call dermatitis will be there, that area. Uh, that is some noise. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, if it is a very mild infection or uh, concentrated locally, you can go for a topical antibiotic therapy. But if you have a complete infection, you can go for systemic antibiotic as well. 
and uh, you can see on the right side yeah yeah this is a condition called as phthisis which is a very common in small birds parakeets and all these things we will present it to you actually what what is phthisis means uh, it is actually whenever there is a you know the feather follicles are there some feather follicles fail to come out so what happens is that they will grow inside this feather follicle will grow inside and around the feather follicle uh, cystic fluid will collect and uh, uh, it forms a feather cyst only remedy for feather cyst is that uh, surgically you have to remove this after giving anesthetic this is a parrot with this problem and uh, this is a very common and uh, very much basic a uh, disease that could be uh, suspected in a bird uh, that is citizen uh, beak and feather disease it's also called as pbft citizen beak and feather disease whenever you are going for a uh, uh, avian practice or especially the uh, citizen practice this is the basic uh, disease you have to keep in your mind it's caused by a circo virus infection uh, as the name suggests it affects the beak and feather the so beak will be overgrown and uh, brittle beak you can see this picture and the feathers is also like that feather will uh, shed off also feather keep on uh, mutilating the feathers and all you see a bird like this it's a typical case of pbft and uh, uh, if you are bringing a new bird or a breeder is bringing a new bird if you want to check whether if the bird having a pbft uh, different uh, uh, laboratories across india they are testing it in kerala we have a uh, uh, laboratory called as beak international in kochi uh, if you send the follicle feather follicle sample they will test uh, they are usually doing hi test hemagglutination inhibition test uh, uh, or else uh, they uh, with the feather follicle they will uh, see if the pathology you can see this is the pathology feather follicle positive pbft case can see the intracytoplasmic inclusion body called as gotroid body can be seen and they will tell you the result positive or negative if it's a positive it's better to uh, avoid the bird if it's a mild case you can give uh, the immunomodulators and if you secondary bacterial infection you can give antibiotics immunomodulators we are uh, in abroad they are commonly going for avian interferons even inf but it's not available in india but for us our good thing uh, selpet company is coming up with an immuno booster uh, called the selpet birds uh, it's a very uh, efficient uh, medicine that we can mix it in the drinking water and give the bird that will they contain all the vital minerals that will enhance the immunity of the bird they have many purpose we will discuss it later uh, for this particular disease we can advise that and this is a common infection that uh, we uh, used to see that's a polyoma virus infection called as french malt might be heard of that french malt i have a bird with french malt like that all its other name is bagariga fledgling disease from the name itself it suggests that it mainly affect the bird group called as budgies or bagariga and that to the fledgling stage so before uh, coming into uh, what is french malt i or uh, bagariga fledgling disease i want to uh, say some basic things about this thing that means uh, all the normal birds can be uh, broadly classified into two groups that is uh, altricial birds and precocial birds precocial birds are the birds we are coming with full uh, feathers and they can within 2 to 3 days they are independent of their uh, parents but uh, most of the other groups like passerine cetaciforms all are uh, altricial birds altricial birds the thing is that they have to go into different stages during the lifetime uh, like hatchling nestling and fledgling hatchling is a bird they have no feather they grow with no feathers and they have a closed eye they can't open the eye they can't see first uh, 3 days they are uh, called as hatchlings these altricial birds then from 3rd to 13 days they are called nestlings because they have developed very soft leathery feathers but still they can't fly and they are called nestling and then after 13 days that 15 days to uh, months together two months or three months they are called a stage called a fledgling they'll get full body feathers but still uh, they depend on their parents this is a three stages of a group uh, i mean stages in the life of an altricial bird so this french malt or bagariga fledgling disease directly affect this fledgling stage that's why its name is uh, bagariga fledgling disease french malt so whenever it's affecting the small birds uh, they primarily affect their primary flight feathers you know uh, two feathers are there that tail feathers and wing feather 
which is helping them to fly. This uh, polyoma virus affects that feather only. That means they will have a shortened tail and uh, see the tail is very short and feathers, wing feathers are very small. That means they can't fly at, at all. Even if uh, this uh, virus infection is gone over also, they will they can't fly. They are called as creeper or runner. In some uh, breeders, no, they will uh, uh, avoid these birds or uh, uh, remove the birds from the stock. Others, they what they do is they will keep a different in the cage. They give so much uh, perches here and there so that the bird will climb from the one perch to the other, reach the upper area of the cage. Like that also, you can manage. And uh, this is only uh, cytosine bird disease with preventive vaccination is available. They can have even polyoma virus vaccines are available, field vaccines are available, but uh, it's not uh, widely available in India. Abroad it's available, but what the bigger uh, people that even breeders are doing now, they were importing this uh, polyoma virus uh, vaccine and they are using it as well. And uh, the treatment, there is no treatment as it is self liberating but if there is some secondary vaccine infection or immunomodulator all can be given. And you have to isolate the nestling. Because when it, uh, up to nestling to fledging stage, this infection occurs, so you have to isolate all the nestling. And also, we have to uh, advise the owner to avoid breeding for at least four months after the uh, French mold infection. Or at least all the birds become six months of age. When it becomes six months, they become adult. So polyoma virus affection will not be there. That's it. And uh, next disease is AV pox. AV pox is a very common disease uh, which will come across in our practice. It's caused by uh, pox virus. Sorry. There are two forms of pox virus are there. Uh, one is uh, dry pox. Uh, and or wet, uh, other one is a wet box or diphthetic box. So dry box is not a problem. It will come affects the skinless area, featherless area on the eye, on the ear, on the nose, on the legs and all those things. But the wet box is affecting the mucosa, inner mucosa area. That is little problematic because whenever they have wet box, a bird cannot eat the food because there is a box lesions inside the mouth, crop and the esophagus. They can't eat the food. So in that case, you have to take care of that bird by uh, giving uh, hand feed, hand feeding the bird. So actually, this uh, unless and until there is no much complication for this pox, uh, or it is a pet pox, you have to go for secondary uh, to avoid secondary bacterial infection. You have to go for antibiotics. Otherwise, no need of antibiotics. The uh, good medicine we can uh, give is uh, boric acid and honey. That is melboracis. That is an excellent medicine. Uh, that honey has a soothing effect. And another ethnopharmacology preparation is available that you can make at home. One is a neem leaf, uh, mixing, uh, pasting the neem leaf, turmeric and boric acid in um, uh, honey or uh, bland oil like coconut oil. You can make a paste and apply all over the body. And if even you can give in drinking water to drink also. That is a very effective. I personally find it effective in many of the pox cases. And for prevention, we have Tijan pox vaccines and canary pox vaccines are available, uh, but unfortunately, it's not available in India. I hope uh, people are listening to me. I can't understand you. Uh, if they are feeling boredom or not, I don't know. I will wind up very soon. Don't worry. I know this is a bad time, like uh, after a full stomach food and all you feel sleepy. I hope. I don't know. Uh, okay. So we have already talked about ectoparasiticides, uh, ectoparasites, uh, and just pressure. You can see the nematocoptus or the red scaly mite infection like this in the face. You can suspect of, uh, can conformally tell that it is a nematocoptus infection. And if you have uh, uh, red mites, you can see quill mite. This bird, you can see uh, uh, quill mite is there or carporingus infection. It should be like a very uh, vulgar. You can see over here. And the lice infection is there, you can see directly on the bird's feathers. And uh, you can see uh, ticks are there, soft and hard ticks are there in the body, lice are there, all those things, fleas are there. So what the treatment you are going, you can use all the topical pyrethrins, uh, like uh, delta metrin, cypermetrin also can be used. And uh, here one important product is that, um, Avian insect liquidatory is that AIL. Uh, it's like uh, it's been marketed by company Vetapharm. It's very good thing actually. It is a combination medicine. You can make a five first solution and apply. The good thing is that you can directly apply on the nestling also. It's very safe. 
Also, it's available as ivermectin, moxidectin, spotron can be good. We can spotron at the neck area. That is also it's a good conductor parasiticide. And this is an another important uh, disease that we come across in our avian practice. That is self mutilation syndrome and feather plucking. Whenever you are going into this uh, field or avian practice, you will get uh, one case for sure. So people will come with uh, this problem. Uh, there are numerous causes can be there, like physical and behavioral causes. Physical causes like dermatitis, some dermatitis problem, or some folliculitis, all malnourishment. And that means if they are giving all C diet, all C diet will be deficient in vitamin A. Vitamin deficiency will show this feather plucking. And due to environment also, if the owner is having cigarette smoking, that uh, bird uh, claim to have exhibit this feather plucking behavior. Heavy mectotoxicity like that toxic causes, seed toxic causes and ectoparasites are there, they will do that. And even uh, behaviorally also, if a bird is fit and they just don't have any physical problem, but still they are uh, plucking the feather, that is a behavior problem, like attention seeking and boredom or anxiety and all this. Here you can see two pictures here uh, of pocket tail. Uh, number one is like, uh, uh, it's a feather plucking actually. That means you can see no feathers on the neck, head and all. That means a cage may have plucked it, or its parents have plucked it. That is a feather plucking case. And this is a self mutilation case. Second, the uh, number second is a self mutilation case because you can see the neck area, there is no feathers at all. That is, bird himself have taken it off so that you can um, uh, treat accordingly. The basic treatment have to aim at removing the root cause. I have told you uh, there are n number of causes are there for this particular problem. So first you have to identify what is the problem with it and you can remove the tree, uh, root cause which will be removed. And meanwhile you can uh, go for application of e collar Elizabethan collars can be used or inverted Elizabethan collars can be used or Stelchian's collar. You can see this collar here. It's widely available in Amazon and Flipkart all the way. Uh, that is it's called a Stelchian collars. It's like a lightweight material. You have screws and all. See the bird has put that so they can avoid that uh, biting tendency till the treatment is over and there are tubular collars are available and we can prefer by themselves this one is a tubular collar anything uh, and if there is a problem with the behavior problem you can uh, give psychotropic drugs like diazepam, haloperidol, diphenhydramine, acipromazine, whatever we are giving to the dogs and cats then we can go for it. Next, we will go to the affections of beak. Uh, this is a malformation of beak is very common in birds. You can see this is a normal bird. You can see uh, two beaks are there, upper maxillary beak, lower mandibular beak. Normally, upper maxillary beak is lengthier than that of lower. And in some cases, you can see it's laterally deviated and uh, which is like a scissor. It's called a scissor beak or right beak. And you can see here, the lower beak is uh, bigger than that of upper beak. This is prognathism. That means uh, lower beak is mandibular. Beak is uh, more size than a beak, so bird can't eat. And there will be lateral compression. You can see this macaw, you can see laterally compressed uh, upper beak. And uh, sometimes overgrown beaks will be there because of lack of self trimming. Sometimes there is no toys or self trimming equipment or purchase in the bird. They, they will keep on giving this overgrown beaks. And sometimes the uh, see this bird does not have a lower beak at all the, due to some trauma and all it have formed like that sometimes congenitally the birds are like this due to some problem with the incubator temperature while they are hatching off or humidity problem and then that will cause a congenital problem and uh, um, if it is an young bird basically if an young bird you can go for manual massaging 10 minutes uh, daily twice or thrice daily uh, if sometimes you can bring back into normal but if it is an adult bird, already keratinization or calcium uh, calcification occurred, you can't do that. Only thing you can do is beak trimming can be done. So overgrown beaks and all, you can trim the beak. Uh, the correct terminology is trimming. Sometimes we uh, mistakenly use just de-beaking. They will tell, oh my God, today we have de-beaking of the bird. De-beaking means removing the beak. If you remove a complete beak, however you will eat. So correct terminology is beak trimming, just for your information. So many people have used uh, uh, mistakenly just to correct you. And if there is uh, some uh, fracture and trauma, you can use prostate. You can see the picture of a macaw here, called and blue macaw. You can see it's a prosthetic beak stabbing. And another important thing is that serrate. Uh, 
last class I have told you about Sere. Sere is nothing but uh, it is uh, around the nasal opening. We have the outgrowth here that is called a Sere. Hmm? That you can see in uh, parakeets or budgies, this uh, facial structure. Hmm? If uh, 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 in vitamin A deficiency and hyperestrogenism, you can see this serre of this bird, you see it's hypertrophy. This is called a serre hypertrophy. Even uh, these birds, we can uh, have sexual dimorphism. That means you can see which is a male and female. That means a female budgie will have brown. This is a female during the boarding season. Their uh, serre will be brown in color. Male budgie serre will be blue in color. But if you have a male budgie with uh, sertoli cell tumor, uh, due to the estrogen effect, this blue colored serre will turn to brown. Okay. And also, there is another one important thing about serre is that uh, if you have a pale serre like this, you can suspect some chronic illness. That means if a bird is uh, being affected so long, you have a uh, pale serre. And uh, uh, next one is affection of eye. Uh, conjunctivitis is a very common thing. Uh, you can either use antibiotic eye drops or uh, uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drug drops can be used against the conjunctivitis and no steroid to be used because steroid have uh, systemic absorption even you are using topically. So try to avoid the steroids. And dry eye is another important thing due to vitamin A deficiency that is also can cause uh, blindness. You have to treat accordingly. And another one is the uh, keratitis that is the inflammation of the cornea. I have got a case of a peacock when I was working in veterinary hospital in Lampur in my place. And uh, this was a case, you can see the uh, inflammation. It can be either infectious or non-infectious. Non-infectious like trauma or foreign body, uh, you can see the keratitis. Only thing is that you can give antibiotic or uh, eye drops, NSA eye drops you can give, or else you can go for temporary tracheotopy till the uh, inflammation subsides. And uh, uh, cataract is also uh, not much common in the birds. Uh, there's a picture which I have taken from a book. Uh, I don't come across any case of cataract so far. And um, another important disease is that, uh, or affection is that splay leg or hip subluxation, which is very common in uh, nestling or fledgling because of the slippery nest box. It's very common. And uh, so what breeders do now, they use some uh, uh, things like this. And you know this cradle where this baby sticks to all cradle. Just like they will make with bamboo sticks or choir, they can make this thing, keep the legs in that so that it won't splay off. Like that, you can do the best of simple one is you can go figure of eight copies. Very small birds, chicks, you can go for uh, with the help of a rubber band. You can see the picture with a rubber band and a plastic straw. You can keep the straw like this into the rubber band. Two holes are there. Into one hole, we can pass one leg. And to other horse, you can put the other leg so that it won't split, it will stay together. That is a simple thing. If you have a, a severe case of splay uh, leg, you can even go for surgical corrections. And uh, one other common uh, uh, disease is uh, bumble foot will come up, with, especially when you are going for a cockatiel practice. It's very common due to staphylococcus or E. coli infection. But some predisposing uh, things are there, like uh, smooth purchase or vitamin A deficiency or unhygienic. So, you know, uh, if you consider, you can see, hope you can see my video. If you uh, consider this as a uh, bird, you know, bird has four digits. Uh, three digits, anterior director and fourth digit, posterior director. So, ideal perch is like a, whenever they perch it, it just touches the uh, uh, three finger with the fourth finger. Fourth digit have to be ideally touched. If uh, it is an oversized purse, it won't touch also. That is an oversized purse. If it is an undersized purse like this, it will uh, completely cross over. Legs will completely close over it. So this undersized purse and oversized purse will can cause this bumble foot disease. Mm -hmm. So you have to, whenever you are giving a, a, a purchase to a bird, you have to see the leg size of the bird. And this picture you can grade the this bumble foot disease. You can see grade zero this is a normal leg or Food. and this is a uh, slight excoriation which is a grade one and then grade two grade three and grade four complete excoriation and even the uh, digital uh, uh, this uh, joints in the digits are also affected with arthritis so if it is a mild case you can go for just topical antibiotic or else if it's systemically uh, if it's a little bigger like uh, two or three you have to go for systemic antibiotic as well 
and for painkiller you can go for meloxicam meloxicam is a very safe painkiller and as i said you can use in most of the species of bird without any complication at the dose rate of 0.5 to 2 mg per kg body weight can give and if it's severe case we have to debride it surgically and apply a bandage called as ball bandage i think you can see my cursor over here and after debriding can keep a ball with a soft cotton and you can bandage it the ball bandage so that bird does not feel any pain while walking and bird start walking again that is called a ball bandage and leg band i have told that identification method of a bird is banding that is closed bands are there which is one is kept in uh, it can remove it so sometimes there will be chance of uh, accidental skewing of this one or it sometimes they will uh, caught it in, inside the cage wall and they will remove it and all like that can happen so sometimes keratin build up can happen in between this uh, bands and the leg so that it can cause swelling and vascular necrosis you can see this picture and this is a picture of one of my client and you can see how much it is only thing is that suddenly you have to remove the uh, band that is only the ring uh, Why, why removing the ring? Uh, so many people make a mistake that we, uh, after seeing that, we will take one bone cutter or pin cutter or uh, uh, something of that sort and remove directly. But the problem is that since it is uh, highly enlarged, if you are directly uh, cutting it off, it will cause problem. For that, a simple technique is that nothing is not a technique. I can say with a bone holder, you can hold the uh, ring like this. If it's a, if it's a ring, is this one? You can just hold the ring like this with the bone holder, and with the cutter you can cut it so that it won't uh, slip off. Okay. So uh, not only that, uh, after removing, you have to give painkillers and antibiotic as well. So next we will go for another system that is musculoskeletal abnormalities. Uh, if you are thinking of skeletal disorder, two disorder we will come into our one is the wing fracture, and uh, the second is the uh, link leg fractures or hind limb fractures. Okay, uh, so wing fracture mostly causes will be of trauma or uh, accident. Of the major problem is that for the wild bird, uh, the major common commonly the fracture will be open. That means open means uh, it will associated with an open wound also. And uh, if it is affects the humerus like pneumatic bone, what problem is that it will directly communicate to the the uh, cervical air sac and it will cause cervical sacralitis. That is a major problem. by physical examination and radiography you can diagnose this condition this is a case of a dronco you can see uh, you can see the right wing of the dronco it's drooped drooped up uh, right wing is an uh, is an indication of fracture or dislocation by physical orthopedic examination you can come to know otherwise if we are uh, we were to uh, see it's a closed fracture you can go for x ray as well and how to manage the x ray this is a thing uh, people come in trouble with Uh, external palpation technique like bandaging, splinting, and all those things can do in uh, small birds. And this is a picture uh, of a barn owl uh, with the wing fracture. Uh, an owl with the wing fracture. Uh, we have get splint and then bandage. Or also surgical correction is the be best method. If you are going for a flying bird, if you are doing surgical correction only, you will get hundred percent is an anatomical position. Once there is hundred percent anatomical. Position only, the bird will be able to fly. Otherwise, for uh, fracture will heal, but bird can't fly. This is a case of a wing fracture in a kite, which has been done in when I, during my uh, PG time in Veterinary College, Manmuthi, Kerala. Uh, a bird was rescued and come to our clinic, and it has a humerus open fracture was there, an oblique fracture, long oblique fracture. We have done type one external skeletal fixation with the side bar. We have used MC. MC lab used the side bar. MC is nothing but a thing normally we used for um, in but whenever there is leakage we used to do that. The same MC we can use it. The good thing is that uh, rate is very less, like thirty rupees only for one MC. We can use for two three cases. And the other thing is that uh, they are very lightweight also. Okay, like that. This is a pre-operative X-ray of that bird uh, of uh, humerus fracture. So you can see the long oblique overriding fracture. Once we reduced it and done type one external skeletal fixation, you can see how the good the anatomy and position has come. Okay. And another uh, important fracture we come across is leg fracture. Uh, that's also trauma. And commonly affected uh, fracture is tibiotarsus fracture. 
it's a longest body you know uh, in bird in a bird a longest body is tibiotarsus only that fracture is the most commonly we will come across uh, by physical examination x-ray you can diagnose it uh, treatment is just like that external coaptation technique for surgically you can correct it uh, external coaptation the uh, this is a uh, uh, peacock or peafowl which is presented uh, into the government of this when i was present there we have done uh, a few plaster of paris then so close to fracture only and it was a reducible fracture we have done that and if you have a small bird like uh, african live birds or budgerigas you can go for altman speed it's very easy to perform very small bird you can uh, either with the help of um, micro tape or adhesive tape you can make a uh, sheet out of that keeping one by one in position and uh, one sheet you have to spread under the uh, injured leg keep the leg over there on the second sheet you can uh, uh, keep over here and uh, after that you can paste it and with the help of a curved artery forceps you can level the area and excess area to be cut off you can retain it to 2 to 3 weeks then complete healing will be there or surgical correction can also be attempted this is a case of cockatiel uh, which was also i had done during my pg time uh this is a bird uh, which enjoyed open fracture was there we have done intramedullary pinning and excess pin have been cut off and bandaging was there this is the uh you during the passing of the pin, uh, intramedullary pin this is the post operative radiogram okay you can see the pin in position and uh, tie in fixation this is a uh, advisable internationally advisable or accepted mode of uh, reduction or management of long bone fracture in a bird the tie in fixation is nothing but it's an hybrid fixator uh, including tie uh, intramedullary pin with external sclater fixation that means we are comparing both techniques together intramedullary pinning and external sclater fixator have been used this is a case of old fracture in a, i think it's a poultry only common poultry you can see the mal joint malformation Joint has malleably formed. I mean, the fracture is mal. Callus has been removed. First, we can open, make an opening over here. Excess callus has been removed. Uh, fracture end has attached, which is a long oblique fracture was there. And you have passed the intramedullary pin and make the fracture fragment in position. And excess uh, after making it, after making it in, yeah, sorry, after making your back, na. I can get in some uh, noise. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. after keeping the leg, I mean fracture fragment in position, I have done circulate wiring also has been done, and uh, uh, pin has been opposed. Sorry. I I I I I request you to please keep silence. Uh, who is this? I can't find out. Can you mute all, uh, Doctor Sir? Ah, uh ah, -huh, yeah. Or should you just you? You are the host, so mute all. You have to mute all, all of them. Mute all. Where is the option? Uh, when you go, ah, uh, uh, mute all, mute all. Yeah. Uh, mute all. Okay. So just do mute all. Okay, I have muted. And uh, uh, now we have uh, went for what we call, sorry, yeah. Uh, we have uh, uh, done intramedullary pin. The excess pin have been bent 180 degree. Excessive pin I have bent here 180 degree, and then externally uh, the lateral uh, pins have been kept K wires. The so K wire only what we are using as intramedullary pin. And the uh, side bar we have used MC as well, and uh, we have bandaged it. That is called as tying fixator. It's very uh, good and uh, very uh, useful and advisable. One. And uh, now we will go for uh, affections of GI tract, which is very common in the. Uh, Okay, uh, so we will go for uh, GI tract affections, which is a very common uh, uh, thing we will come into our practice. 
one one the uh, important uh, disease is oral thrush or candidiasis which is an yeast infection uh, the major uh, symptoms you can see is that vomiting or regurgitation crop stages will be there and the diphtheritic membrane is there in the oral canal see this is a picture you can see a white white diphtheritic membranes are there that can be a that can be a candidiasis and uh, uh, post mortem thing when you open the crop you can see completely diphtheritic membrane in the uh, crop also so how to diagnose this you can take a throat swab or crop wash you can go for cytology this is a picture on the down down right uh, we have stained it you can see the yeast organism numerous yeast organism then it is a clear case of candidiasis uh, treatment is you can use antifungal like ketoconazole at the dose rate of 20 mg per kg body weight once daily or twice daily you can go for up to 2 weeks or fluconazole 5 to 15 is more uh, good than ketoconazole or you can go 5 to 15 mg per kg twice daily for 14 days at least then you have to make a recheck and confirm whether it is acceptable uh the breeders used to give apple cider vinegar because uh, this yeast cannot survive in acidic ph in the crop so that when you give apple cider vinegar uh, 10 to 16 uh, ml per liter of drinking water we can uh, control this even they are using during the rainy season when the candidiasis problems are high they even we can give us um, preventive also this apple cider vinegar or uh, if you don't have apple cider vinegar lemon juice will be and uh, the next disease is uh, uh trichomoniasis or canker uh, it's a protozoal disease it's very similar to that of uh, the other candidiasis disease common in pigeons and budgies uh, the same symptoms like vomiting regurgitation crop stages diphtheritic membranes will be there in the oral pharynx so how to differentiate only how to differential thing is that uh, you have to take a swab and uh, you have to examine under microscope if it is a protozoal infection you can say normal numerous protozoa uh bathing in that fluid you can see or running here and there so that's confirmed case of uh, trichomoniasis you can go for metronidazole at the dose rate of 10 to 30 mg per kg body weight for one week or you can get rid of that that is a good thing so this is to be differentially diagnosis oral thrush and trichomoniasis both look similar only thing to differential diagnosis is crop swab and another thing is a crop stages uh, uh that means when a and bird cannot uh empty its crop for 6 hours then it's called as crop stages uh, numerous causes can be there even cold food if you are giving can cause crop stages crop burn is there even i have already told candidiasis or trichomoniasis is there it also can cause crop stages uh the simple method is that uh, you have to flush back the crop content with the help of a crop tube you have to pass a crop tube and you have to push the water uh, mix it and take it off and remove it also you can give a prokinetic agents like metoclopramide at the dose rate of uh, 0.5 mg per kg uh, intramuscular and followed by uh, orally uh, every 8 hours interval also you can go for even if doing this thing you cannot correct it and uh, its uh, content is very high you have to go for uh, opening of the crop surgically that's called ingloviotomy and remove the contents and this is a common thing which is being seen in chicks and feed chicks whenever you are going for and feed chicks we all always tell to the breeders to uh, hand feed their chicks with uh, slight uh, body temperature at least 100 to 103 degree fahrenheit or at least 37 degree celsius you have to go for sometimes they'll overfeed overheat the hand feed form like that it will cause burning what happened is that first it is seen like erythema reddish area in the uh, crop after that it got crust you can see in the first picture after the reddening it forms the crust second stage third stage what happened is that the crust will remove and it will form fistula that is the street stages of a crop burn whenever we are seeing this we have to start with an analgesic painkiller and antibiotics must antibiotic is a must and you have to uh, shift to the parenteral therapy iv fluid therapy injection uh, avoiding the oral therapy so that sometimes it will heal but once it is completely uh, gone beyond our hands that means when the crop becomes fistulous you have to surgically deburide it dissect it and remove it you can see this is a case of complete uh, crop burn and uh, fistula you can see two opening here the upper opening is the opening from the esophagus the lower opening is a opening into the proventricle the opening you can see that was affected this is an important disease uh, as far as uh, pet birds are concerned that is proventricular dilatation disease pdd we used to tell pdd proventricular dilatation disease which is caused by a bona virus group of uh, virus the good thing or the 
specifically we can uh, identify it by seeing two symptoms that that means the bird affected with the proventricular dilatation disease they will have a gi symptoms as well as a neurologic symptom gi symptoms like undigested food in the droppings vomiting will be there you can see the picture uh, and the food will be undigested all the food what you are giving undigestedly come out and uh, also neurological symptoms like ataxia abnormal head movement self mutilation everything will be there that means if you are seeing a bird with neurological plus a uh, ga symptom you can suspect first disease as pdd proventricular dilatation disease if you want to confirm it your diagnosis can be made by x ray even um, uh, plain x ray or contrast x ray can do or else if you want to uh, if some animal bird died you can go for autopsy you can see this is an autopsy view of a pdd you can see how big the proventricular when compared to gizzard usually gizzard will be bigger proventricular will be smaller and this is an x ray view of uh, a proventricular di dilated proventriculus and uh, actually this uh, uh, virus bona virus will cause ganglioneuritis that's why they are showing this uh, uh, what we call <clears throat> this neurological symptom to reduce ganglioneuritis you can go for uh, a group of drug called a, a drug called a celecoxib celecoxib uh, is nothing but it's just like an nsa like meloxicam or fluoroxin meclobin just like their group called celecoxib is a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug at the dose rate of 10 mg per kg body weight once in a day uh, but you see the how many days you have to use 6 weeks to 24 weeks that means 24 weeks is 6 months that means one and a half month to 6 months therapy you have to give that is a major problem with this ctd and some people use uh, cyclosporin as well if they don't have celecoxib uh, cyclosporin can be dose, given at the dose rate of 10 mg per kg body weight twice daily that to an extended period of one month two months three months also you have to give along with that you have to give a multivitamins and uh, uh, liver supplements as well uh, and uh, this is another important uh, problem we come across with avian practice that is a foreign body obstruction this is very common Pro prop uh, obstruction and proventricular like obstruction is very common the signs are like vomiting anorexia sometimes decreased dropping or completely uh, no dropping at all uh, on complete constipation melina all will be there or they also tell the something history mostly i get the cases during hand feeding whenever the bird, they are giving hand feeding with rubber to this bird their beak is very strong they will eat it inside that is a common case for body obstruction come uh, across in kerala i used to get a lot of cases uh, with x ray plane or contrast x ray you can come across this uh, either you can uh, treatment is like you can manually remove uh, this one for in body under general anesthesia see this you can see this uh, case of this macau uh, the owner was not willing to do intraoperatively so i uh, first we tried with general anesthesia and uh, what i did is that i palpated the tube this tube you can see the size of the tube i have compared with the 10 rupee uh, coin see what size it is so you can directly feel it and the crop and you have to palpate it upwards you know, palpate it and make up to the stomach you hold it with the help of a uh, uh, curved artery forceps you directly pass it to the mouth and take it out like that i have removed that in some cases you can go for it in some cases you won't go see the case of a property here i can't uh, remove like this so i went for inguinotomy the inguinotomy opening and i removed the uh, uh, the same like the same rubber too we can see the rubber picture here so uh, otherwise sometimes it is in the crop it's well and good but once it bypasses the crop and go into the proventriculus or gizzard then its problem comes you will see it's a rubber thing you will be <coughs> giving some uh, laxative otherwise uh, you can go for uh, ciliotomy that means open laparotomy and do uh, an opening in the proventriculus that means proventriculotomy and take the uh, uh, foreign body if the foreign body is in proventriculus or gizzard also have to do proventricular we don't go for then cut the gizzard ventricular tummy is not at all advised then now we will go uh, for a video you can see a video over here carefully watch it you can see and say very common uh, affections that is a lead toxicosis and you will come back to this is a picture it shared it's not a, taken by me or uh, it's actually a whatsapp shared video of a veterinarian uh, from karnataka i don't know whether he is presently here 
and this is a case uh, of that actually uh, when we went to the the major problem is that the uh, uh, the bird is passing uh, blood in the feces and uh, they are having this neurological symptoms so first, then we asked for the history so recently painted the cage was recently painted and the home was recently painted and they have seen the bird eating the paint also so that is a common cause of this lead lead based pain most of the pains available are lead based only or battery if bird have access to the battery or petrol fumes they will cause this uh, lead toxic process and the science will be a uh, renal science gi science and neurology science will be there renal science i told came to the blood in the urine part and all you so much urine will be there and gi science like regurgitation dark pieces and uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, neurological symptoms like ataxia tremor you can see ataxia and tremors you can see paralysis bird is paralyzed how to uh, diagnose it by a simple x-ray we can see because you know lead is radio opaque you can see both we have to so see, see you can see the lead particles here in the lateral view also you can see the lead particles uh, like that we can confirm it otherwise uh, you can take the blood and send the cbc lower hemoglobin and lower rbc which are just of radio of I mean, uh, lead toxicosis or as the same blood you can analyze the lead content if its content is greater than 20 milligram per deciliter level uh, you can uh, absolutely tell that it's a case of lead toxic process even tissue samples can be selected the treatment is actually uh, aimed at uh, three different modality of treatments are there. One is primary treatment, second one is the chelative treatment, and third one is the supportive treatment. The primary treatment is that uh, you can go for crop or gassing lavage. As soon as they eat this thing, you can uh, lavage it with the help of crop needle and take off the particles. Or else, uh, if you have seen particles like this, you can go for surgical removal of foreign body. Mostly it will be located in the gizzard directly goes into the gizzard and you have to go for proventriculotomy and remove it from the gizzard and uh, if you can't find anything of that sort you can go for KDT therapy uh, like uh, you can go for chelating agent like calcium disodium ADTA at the dose rate of 10 to 40 milligram per kg intramuscularly twice daily can be used or else you can go for deep enzylamine at the rate of 55 milligram per kg body weight per orally that is orally other one is intramuscularly can be used along with that supported therapy with and all can be tried. Uh, I personally su uh, suggest all the mixing of these modalities can be tried for a better uh, progress. And uh, we'll come to the affections of the respiratory system. This is very common. It's very, very common. But this is you will come across in the avian practice. The major one is sinusitis uh, or respiratory distress, it can cause by three groups of organisms in the birds, like mycoplasma or chlamydia and pastrola. The problem is that chlamydial uh, sinusitis or chlamydial respiratory problem is zoonotic. We have a bird have chlamydia, we are uh, watching it, it's uh, spread to you also. This is only uh, avian disease that is zoonotic. This major, major avian disease that is zoonotic. And the symptoms will be ocular nasal discharge will be there. I you can see exophthalmus is there. Sinus will be distant. You can see this African gray parrot with the distended sinus, sneezing, scratching of the face, all are the symptoms abdominal breathing, tail bobbing, these are all the problems you can see. If you can take an x-ray, if we have, there is, I told the uh, lungs is like a honeycomb-like appearance. If you have seen some radiopexity or radiolucency, you can repeat it off uh, uh, in a respiratory distress, or you can take cytology and culture from the intraorbital sinus. I, know, I told how to take samples and all, that you can go for it. Uh, the major treatment is aimed to, well, because this, you know, uh, unlike animals, birds have uh, inficiated pus. That means that pus is inficiated or solid pus. It won't come out as uh, as simple as that. So that in this case, we have to go for surgically remove, uh, make an opening on the sinus and remove the pus. Uh, or uh, try with antimicrobial therapy, depending on what type of organ. So for that, we have to go for cytology, culture, and sensitivity. And nebulization is, I find, is a very, very... Uh, best method for controlling uh, respiratory infection nebulization. Either you can go for endrofloxacin or gendamycin. Even our injectable will do. Uh, Taking in a 0.5 ml in 4 ml or 5 ml normal saline in nebulization machine and give it. You can see this picture. Yes, we sir. used to conduct the nebulization here and after oxygen therapy also. And this is a common other disease which you get in the bird that is a ruptured cervical cephalic air sac. That means bird we collect ball in. Sometimes owner will call to and say, hey, doctor, my bird is become bald, ballooned, ballooning of the bird. This is a common 
cause of ruptured cervical cephalic air sacculitis. This can be due to either any trauma or any air sacculitis due to mycoplasma or chronic sinusitis can be this. Usually what we do is that we will, with the help of a scalpel or needle, just make a prick or lancet so that air will be gone. But what happened is that after gone, sometimes after that, again relief will be there. Uh, usually we people, uh, usually we people do only lancet. We don't do antimicrobial therapy, but that's why I am suggested that after lancing, whenever you are going for a uh, tricking, after that, have to go for antimicrobial therapy, antibiotic therapy. And in some cases, it's repeatedly coming off, you can go for acrylic stems are there, which are commonly used in abroad. I don't use it till now in my practice. Okay. Just for your information, I'm telling. And this is a very common disease in uh, pigeons, peasants, and uh, fingers. That is a paramyxovirus infection, Newcastle disease, we tell. Uh, it's a neurological and respiratory science will be there. You can see torticollis, uh, just like pigeon malaria I told, no, the same torticollis will be there in this bird. See this golden fins, beautiful bird with the rainbow color. You can see the head is tilting. This is a case of uh, Newcastle disease. And uh, it's very difficult to uh, diagnose unless you, uh, in birds, we will go for HI in our living condition. Oh, and no. when we can, from the history, we could able to see because no. it's a high morbidity no. there. Paramyxo. Hello. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Uh, doctor, sir. Doctor, yes. John, please, can, can you please mute all from your side? Yeah, I'm muting, muting. Mute, mute. Yes. Mute <laughs> I'm so sorry for inconvenience. Oh, no problem. Okay. It's okay. It can happen. Uh, so, uh, the how we will uh, differentiate uh, paramyxovirus from uh, this hemoprotease columbi or uh, pigeon malaria? One thing is that blood smear examination. Second one is that uh, the pattern of morbidity. Morbidity pattern is very high in this uh, that means all the cage birds, all the birds will be affected all on at once and its death will be also very fast. We have seen a postmortem lesions and clinical signs. That means you can see in proventriculus, hemorrhage, gizzard hemorrhage and uh, this is a typical uh, postmortem lesion I could tell. That is a tickle tons tonsil hemorrhage. You know, paired symptoms is there in most of the birds and at the sequel area, there is a tonsil. It will be hemorrhage. If you see a sequel tonsil, you can 100% confirm it, tell that. It is a case of paramyxoidus infection. Okay. And then comes, uh, it's very difficult to control, but only thing is that uh, we have to control secondary bacterial infection. And uh, you can vaccination, of course, you can go for the vaccination of the rest of the flock. But also, you can go for immuno boosting the flock. For that, I have told already, uh, sulfide birds is having wonderful results for the immunity enhancing. There I have different uh, applications for this sulfide bird. Of that, I have personally find this uh, mono boosting effect is very much high in the sulfide birds. And uh, for the control of the infection, you can go for vaccines that are available for the pigeons, mostly for pigeons, not for other uh, birds. Pigeons, they have Colombo work, uh, paramyxovirus in this one, uh, paramyxonobilis viruses, vaccines are available. Chevivac is available, a dose of 200. Uh, injections are available mm -hmm. and uh, we will come to the end of our presentation uh, affections of reproductive tracts that is uh, of that the very important one i have discussed is egg binding dystopia this is will be there you will be dealt with this is very common and whenever you do have in practice you will get one case for sure so how to uh, see this that is an important thing you have to uh, listen to me carefully the predisposing factors for this uh, egg binding is that age, overaged birds or underaged birds, if they are try to uh, oviposition or try to pass the egg, then this problem has come. Also, there is problem with malnourishment, calcium deficiency, and all those things, and obesity. Very obese birds can cause egg binding. Uh, major positive organs, I mean, causative causes like uh, uh, etiologies, calcium deficiency, and nitritis. The major science is that the penguin like posture because due to this uh, heavy lot of this uh, egg, the bird can't stand up. 
so that uh, under the posterior area will come down that's why it is uh, getting a penguin like posture you can see the penguin like posture in a bird it's a spectrosis or abdomen this is picture you can see the abdomen when you see the abdomen in small birds you can see abdomen is highly distended that in a female bird first and foremost thing to suspect it is egg banging so yeah and bird keep on straining to pass this either you can go for uh, ultrasound scanning uh, or x-ray you can uh, differentially diagnose it uh, x-ray will be better this is a picture you can see two big eggs have come and stuck it here single egg has made of them so how to uh, tackle the situation this is very important uh, one thing is that a calcium gluconate injection calcium sandwich injection or calcium gluconate any injection at uh, 0.5 to 1 ml per kg body weight intramuscular or subcutaneous uh, very slowly that is the first thing to be done this can this calcium can be repeated every 6 hours needed and a single dose of or single shot of oxytocin can be given at the dose rate of 5 to 10 international unit per kg intramuscular that to intramuscular being or one shot i have written 224h that means this one time only to be given after giving calcium and oxytocin you have to make the bird stable and you can go for intracloacal massage for that uh, there are one gel is available called prostin vaginal gel <clears throat> or pg2 prostaglandin gel or if you don't have prostin e2 you can go for a bland oil like a olive oil with the help of olive oil with hands you can just uh, uh, massage the cloaca like fan the cloaca so that it will help for the production of oxytocin and sometimes you can manually remove it sometimes it will dilate cloaca will dilate and you can remove it if it's not uh, dilating uh, and you can after giving all those things you are failing you can go for ovocentesis ovocentesis is nothing but we can identify the egg keeping the egg in position you can make a small drill over the egg and remove all the content once you remove all the contents from the egg egg will shrink you can see the picture like this is a big egg remove the content it will shrink once shrink it will come off then if you are failing with all this preliminary technique you need to go for a surgical surgery that is you have to go for c section cesarean section uh, we also called a cesarean only in birds also don't uh, uh, laugh okay cesarean section in a bird yeah we call cesarean only dystopia also okay cesarean you have to go for a you can see the picture over here you have to go for a cesarean uh, incision and uh, you can see the egg here and you can do so we will come to the end of this session uh, so i think uh, we have time uh, so can i go for uh, some questions uh, sir if you don't mind can can ah. we get the presentation 5 minutes for self uh, yeah yeah okay this yeah. Session, huh? no actually i have uh, some uh, uh, case okay, okay. presentations okay. are there no problem okay. if you please, want please. to take uh, no, no, it's okay. earlier, it's okay. you can go so it's okay. So, take so uh, okay, I will finish that thing. Okay. The thing is that uh, uh, now I ask all the participants uh, to lend me your ears. The thing is that uh, I will show you two, three uh, uh, videos. You have to tell me what is your differential diagnosis. For this, you can use your chat box. Okay. Chat box will be better. Hmm? Okay. So everyone can use a uh, chat box uh, and you can uh, message me. You know, I don't want a complete diagnosis. Whatever you understand, whether you are sleeping or you are listening, I want to know. That's why. Uh, simply, I'm just giving a heads up. Uh, don't worry. I just, uh, whatever you know. I just want to see what are symptoms. You can identify. So from my class, have you benefited any, have you getting some uh, home, take away home message or, I want to know. Just as simple as that. Don't take otherwise. Okay. So, let me move on. This is a case of an African grey parrot uh, in Kolkata. Then my uh, one of my clients has bought. Uh, what all things you can understand? Whether it's a normal bird or a, well, it's a sick bird. If sick, which uh, system is affected, or digestive system, or a neurological system, or respiratory system? What you feel? Just that much only one. I just want only. Uh, uh, you can use. Everybody can use your chat box can't see any uh, chats over here. If you don't tell, Quizmaster quiz will get points. I will be going to tell that thing. Can't see anything. Is somebody typing? No. 
ಕಾಣಿಸಿಯನ್ನು ಕಡಿತಾ ಇರ್ತೀನಿ ಓಕೆ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಎನಿ ಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಟೈಪಿಂಗ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆಲ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅನ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಿರೇಟರಿ ಇನ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ಬೋತ್ ಐಸ್ ಐಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾಲ್ಜಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಬೈಲಾಟ್ರಲ್ ಸೈನೋಸೈಟಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿ ದ ರೆಸ್ಪಿರೇಷನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಹೆವಿಲಿ ಬ್ರೀದಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಸಮ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಿರೇಟರಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಅವ್ರ ಸೈನೋಸೈಟಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಇದರ್ ಮೈಕ್ರೋಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಮ ಯಾ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಮೈಕ್ರೋಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಮ ಇನ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ದ ಮೇಜರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ರೂಲ್ಡ್ ಔಟ್ so actually it was like a case of mycoplasma infection so this was is another case actually this is, uh, i have got from a whatsapp group of vets uh i don't think can anybody ah yeah yeah totic always uh, oh you are writing sorry sorry i have to uh, see now only sorry for the chat chat box is uh evident for me right now only sorry for that uh yeah it's torticollis torticollis yeah uh yeah yeah torticollis only yeah paramix can be a paramix okay good 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 so many answers i'm getting yeah it's like uh, what you are all told is correctly it can be three differentials i can get forward one one, one thing is that uh, uh paramix of the major thing to be worried second one is a pigeon malaria the third thing to be uh, worried is uh, what we call any uh, infection i mean uh, b complex deficiency or something of that so okay so we will move to my third question sorry we can change my slide okay this is my third question it's a case of a conure bird uh, what all what else you can uh, see conure bird what will be the thing anybody any answers okay tail bobbing is there yeah yeah a skin problem is there okay respiratory distress yeah yeah the respiratory distress only you can see typical uh, tail bobbing is there and the labored breathing is there oh i know people all you are all listening to my presentation or all you are all well versed i think uh, good happy to see that and this is a fourth case of a macaw uh, can you identify any problem over here can see i'll give a clue please uh, check it uh, face neck and all those stuff some um, answers are not coming in let me see yeah feather plucking by cage mate uh, plucking is there ya yeah, skin okay come come answers are be big yeah dr rajit lal p yeah i'll give 10 points to you very good uh, yeah it's b cup normal yeah pbft it's not a sorry doctor it's not a pbft uh, doctor i just said i've told it is lateral it's, i have told about a b cup normal you know i will rewind it see the b cup normal it's like a right or scissor b <clears throat> it's have some uh, feather packing also there of course uh, somebody has i will give half points to them also but especially uh, this is a problem see now the person will hold it and you can see it correctly b okay okay see the b pakka pakka you can see now we will see the next question it's an african love bird uh, you can see something over there what are the differential differential species let me know the differentials egg bound egg bounding yeah 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 egg bounding feather cyst yeah that's another good differential doctor egg bound yeah doctor lipoma yeah actually this all are differential what you told all correctly 
but it was a lipoma only. Uh, I can give the points to Dr. Prasanna D. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Prasanna. Um, okay, then I'll go to my next. Uh, actually, what all you told is very correct. Only after seeing a video, you can all those things can come to you. Uh, that is, you are all right. I can tell, but it was a case of lipoma. We have surgically removed that too. And uh, you can see this uh, video. Uh, can anybody? I will give twenty points for this. This is a special one. Uh, you can see the tail something over here. What will be that? Okay. Feather cyst, uh, yeah, yeah, meiosis, uh, okay. Feather cyst is a good uh, guess, Dr. Manish Pinkel. Went to picking, yeah, Dr. Anushri, that's also a good uh, uh, this thing. Uh, yeah, uh, not a car diagnosis nobody has made. Yeah, by seeing the video, I know it's difficult to make all the things, but still, I'm just asking you guys. Uh, uh, when the picking uh, masses, uh, lead toxicosis, it's external, perhaps it's in birds, uh, gland infection. Yes, uh, that point goes to uh, Dr. Vivekanand the Madana Palli. Yeah, your base is correct. Yeah, uropygial. Actually, this uropygial adenoma. The case of uh, plane, there is a plane. You can see this is the base of the tail at the tail base. If there is an uh, uh, what we call gland called as uropygial gland or preen gland. This is a case of preen gland adenoma. It's been wounded also. Okay. So very good, West doctor. You are good. And this is a case of a cockatoo. Uh, what is the problem you can see with this cockatoo? What all you can see in the cockatoo? Uh, come on, doctors. Uh, can anybody see what is happening? This pocket is making something, doing something. What it is that? Yeah, painting, panting, yeah, panting respiratory problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come up, come. Obstruction, behavioral, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sneezing respiratory problem, head bobbing, yeah, it's head bobbing only. Yeah, yeah, that is a normal behavior. To attract the female uh, during mating uh, courtship, this is a very common, it's not a disease, it's a normal animal behavior. And uh, Dr. Anushri has uh, done that. Very uh, correct, Dr. Anushri, and thank you. Uh, thank you all for this participation, wonderful participation. Okay, this is a very normal thing. Thus, uh, I came to the end of my presentation. Before that, I would like to uh, tell something about self-fed birds. It's a wonderful product. Uh, I, they have so many advantages or benefits or indications. Uh, you should go for uh, reducing the distress, disease mortality, improving health and conditions in general, immune system strengthening. Uh, in case of normal poultry, we can go for ammonia content, reduces the ammonia content. Even uh, researchers have been confirmed that they can reduce the ammonia content in general and enhance the color and uh, feathers and appearance in general. Of all those things, uh, the third one I have find very much useful in my cases like uh, immune system, uh, uh, strengthening of the immune system. Okay. And this is a uh, major uh, books from which I have referred all those things. Uh, of that, all the books, all the books, uh, e-copies are available. Uh, of that, Exotic Animal Formulary by James Carpenter, the good book of that, in that you will get different uh, dose rate and dosage forms of different medications. And the Avian Medicine and Surgery in Practice by Donnelly is also a simple book. As a beginner, you can go for this. And all other things also very good books. Uh, uh, stay safe and stay healthy uh, during this COVID-19 situation. Thanks all or all for your uh, attention and cooperation. And so glad. Uh, special thanks to the team, uh, Selfens, Enchantrix, Organic Private Limited. I'm so thankful for this thing. And if you have any doubt, I think some of you have uh, given the thing. Before that, I think, Mohiji, uh, uh, if, if you want to run some uh, uh, videos, you can go for it. After that, I will answer your session. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Your, your presentation was so amazing. 
and very informative, sir. Thank you so much for giving so much of time, precious time. Hello? Sir, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Uh, is that, uh, sir, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Thank, thank yeah, you so yeah. Much. I can thank hear you. So you. Much. Can thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.